Right, this is the third lecture on group theory, and it's just some more definition stuff. Uh, nothing vaguely interesting. Uh, right, this is just a method he uses for writing stuff down, uh, permutations. Now, in the lecture, he did just three, but I've got four here because some people were actually confused by it and asking questions in it. Um, to keep track of the swaps, um, so you've got four different things, and you swap around a couple of times. Uh, he does it the following way here. So he's written the, each of these lines represents a different object, so you can have as many as you like. But when you get too many, it gets a bit ridiculous. So here, this one's just saying we swap, this one stay the same, this has stayed the same. This has swapped positions here, as has this one. Uh, similar for all these things, this one's gone down there, and we use these by joining them together. So, say we, we do one swap, which is there, then we do another swap, which is here, which looks a bit messy, um, and what we do is you just stick them together and follow the lines. So the top one, if we follow it, has gone to the bottom, the second one has stayed where it is, as has the third one, the fourth one goes to the top, but that's the only place left anyway. Right, some more definitions. Uh, these are just things you're expected to know. Uh, subgroups inherit the group properties. So if you have a group and you take another one from it, it will have it will have inverses, it will have closure, it will have everything like that. Uh, intersections of subgroups is a group in itself. It's a so you have two groups and you have another group which has gone between two of them, then that's a, a different group. So you have to check that if it's a group as well. Um, isomorphisms. Now this, if you have two groups, F and G, and you're mapping from one to the other, that's all isomorphisms are, then it's a bijection, so it's a one-to-one, -one, and it keeps the group operations. So, say they multiply, then the isomorphism of morphism will multiply. And he uses just the notation IM. So, if alpha and beta are isomorphisms, and alpha is from A mapping to B, and beta is mapping from B to C, then alpha beta is a isomorphism from A to C. But that's you can kind of see where that comes from. Uh, just to end, last lecture I did some examples. Uh, none of them failed. So I've got one here that won't work, and we'll find out why it isn't a group. So find if the following is a group. The reals and subtract. Now first we have to check if it's got closure. So if we take two elements, two reals, uh, both in there here, yeah. And you do 1 minus the other with the operations, we've got A minus B, then that is also going to be a real, that's a bit obvious. The next one is associativity. Now this is where we find out it's not a group, because we have A minus B minus C. We put the brackets, but this is not equal to A minus B minus C, because of the way the brackets have worked. And that's it.